Hi, Gregory Ann here from Midlife with a Vengeance, and I'm coming to you from my kitchen, which is a little unusual for me, but I, um, unless I'm teaching a recipe, of course, but my office is under construction, and the information that I have, I didn't want to wait on. It's important that you get it now. It's timely stuff, and I think you'll find it valuable. Uh, what I want to talk to you about today is that I know that times are challenging for many people, myself included in some areas, and I want to make sure that if you feel the pinch in the supermarket that you don't leave out some things from your shopping cart that are vitally important for you, especially when stress is higher than usual. The body takes a big hit when extra stress hormones are circulating around and the, the message I want to give you is certain tweaks, shall we say, to your shopping list can keep you having great nutrition and not break the bank. So let's start with lean protein. Most of us enjoy protein in one form or another, whether it's fish, chicken, meat, or you know, tofu, cheeses, that kind of thing. And I think, I can't speak for everybody, but in my house, I know we could cut back a little. We could cut back two or three ounces of protein a day, probably per meal, depending on whether it's a weekend and we've got extra time, we're cooking, uh, enjoying a bigger meal. So that's one way to do it. You know, lesser cuts, they call them lesser cuts of meat, are another way to do it. That requires, you know, longer cooking, braising, slower cooking methods. That's okay, but I don't often feel like that kind of food, and it's not really cold out yet, so I certainly am not in the mood for stew or pot roast or anything. I still buy the best I can buy. I still buy the things I like. A really good cut of beef, a really nice piece of tuna, uh, wild salmon, things like that. I'm just using a little bit less. I'm also going to be trying fish that I don't ordinarily cook. Now, I happen to like bluefish, and we live near the ocean, so it comes in pretty regularly, and I get it. When it's really fresh, it's really delicious. Just try to think outside the box a little, but definitely do not eliminate your protein. Don't go without because it's a vitally important nutrient for us uh, in terms of metabolism and bone strength and muscle repair from exercise, etc. cetera. Uh, let's talk about chicken for a second. Chicken, great food, less expensive than beef and most fish these days. Why do people stay away from dark meat? They think it's too fatty or too fattening. It is neither too fatty nor too fattening. You can pull the fat out. You can see it when you cook it. Um, you'd have to eat a lot of dark meat chicken compared to white meat chicken to make a difference in that meal program. You have to really eat a lot. There's not that much of a big difference in fat content. And dark meat chicken has iron and other nutrients that you're not going to find in a boneless, skinless breast or even a breast on the bone. It has to do with the hemoglobin and stuff. So I would suggest buying some thighs, pull off the skin if you don't want the fat to cook into them. You can braise them with all kinds of delicious things. You can grill them, you know, drumsticks, the kids probably love that. Okay, speaking of chicken, you know that I love the egg, the lowly egg. And don't worry about the cholesterol, please. Eggs are great, you can eat up to seven per week, even, you know, the most conservative medical people are now saying, yeah, eggs are okay. And the cholesterol isn't really all that bad for you, the kind of cholesterol that eggs have. And so even if you're buying organic and free range eggs, you're probably going to get a good bang for your buck in terms of the versatility um, and all the different uh, nutrients that are in those little eggy products. Uh, and not to mention they're portable once they're cooked. So I also want to talk about the fruit and veggie component of life. Um, if you're not used to using some of the less expensive vegetables like big bunches of kale, cabbage, red or green, things like that. It's a good time to start throwing them in your stir fries, chopping them up, putting them in your shallots. Now kale, maybe you wouldn't want to eat it raw. My husband eats it raw. He also eats Brussels sprouts raw. I know that's kind of weird. Um, but just get in the habit of buying some of the big, juicy, delicious vegetables that you're not used to buying and padding your meal, so to speak. Expand the meal with a little bit more food of great nutritional resource, high fiber, lots of water. You'll get full faster but you won't necessarily be adding many more calories and certainly not adding much to the bottom line of your grocery bill. Um, the things that are more expensive in the fruit and vegetable world are generally the fruits, things like berries, nutritional powerhouses, as you probably already know. So don't buy the fresh, buy frozen. What? Frozen berries? What am I going to do with those? Well, here's a couple of things. While you're cooking your oatmeal that you've prepared on Monday, now it's Wednesday, you've got your little baggie in the fridge, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you can throw the berries in at the last minute so they get hot and they spread their juices around. They're really delicious. You can also puree the berries, let them thaw, puree them with a little honey or sugar, a little lemon zest or lemon juice, 
And now you've got a great sauce for French toast or pancakes or yogurt or frozen yogurt or oatmeal. Oh my gosh, it's so delicious when you stir in a hot oatmeal. And a smoothie, of course. Uh, I'm not a big smoothie person in the winter. You might still be able to enjoy them. Uh, and it's not that cold out right now, so I'm still having them. But frozen berries, great nutritional resource and much less expensive than um, fresh berries. Now, I want to talk about the oatmeal that I was mentioning. People that buy um, the packets of oatmeal because they're convenient, you can take them to work. Keep them, I, I'm not saying you shouldn't. But now might be a good time to save some money and get some more nutrition to think about cooking up a batch of your own oatmeal. Buy rolled oats. It doesn't really take that long, I promise. On the stove, put the water, the thing, maybe five minutes, you stir it once or twice. You got a big pot of oatmeal. You can portion it out into little cups, put lids on, put it in the fridge or Ziploc bags, whatever. You can still take that to work with you. Put it in your microwave, keep your, you know, bring some roasted walnuts, apple bits, you know, whatever it is that you like to have in your oatmeal in the morning. Just make it at home. So not only do you save money, you get more fiber, more nutrition, and less sugar. You can even add a teaspoon of brown sugar or honey and not even come close to some of those pre-packaged, pre-sweetened oatmeal products. Okay, so those are my tips for today. Cut back on some things, but not all, and certainly don't cut back on your nutrition. Your body, when it's under stress, and these are stressful times, your body needs extra nutrition. So please, please, please shop carefully, shop smart, and make sure you feed yourself well. This is Gregory Ann Cox from Midlife with a Vengeance. If I can do anything for you, if you want to send me an email and tell me what you're doing to extend your nutritional value without spending more money, drop me an email at Gregory at midlifewithavengeance.com. Go to the website. There are many resources there. Most of them are free. There are product recommendations, all kinds of good things for women who at this stage of the game have decided that they're going to take their lives into their own hands and live their best second half.